Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the service of the Snellville United Methodist Church. We are so glad you decided to join us online with worship. And regardless if it were together in person or if we're online, we are still the church. We will always be spiritually connected even if we are physically apart. I would like to invite you to look online at our Snellville United Methodist Church webpage or Facebook page where you can follow along in the order of the worship service. As any service, we want to invite you to sing. We want to invite you to pray. We want to invite you to join in the liturgy of our church together. And this morning, we'd like you to join with Dean and Wanda as they have our affirmation from Romans 8. From Romans chapter 8, verse 35 and 37 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Late. 
It's working all things out You're working all things out Oh yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name We at Snellville would like to welcome you all. We would like to welcome all people into a growing relationship with Jesus. We have our concerns and our prayer list listed on our church webpage and on our church Facebook page. If you would like to um, submit additional prayer concerns or praises, please feel free to do so in the comment section of this feed. We are so glad that you're worshiping with us and we would invite you to be in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Dear loving and graceful God, we thank you for being our God, for caring about us and embracing us as your children. We are thankful for your forgiveness and for your mercy. And even though we cannot gather together physically, we come to you with hearts united. Please God, shower your care on those that we have listed in our concerns and give comfort to those who may not give us wisdom to guide our ways and direct our paths we pray we pray we will be faithful disciples as we pray together your prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen
We would like to thank you for the gifts that you continue to give to our church, the gifts that support our mission and our ministry, which continues on. You are invited to give online or by text, or you can mail your checks to the church. Again, we thank you. We thank you for continuing to tithe and give to the life of the Snellville United Methodist Church. Hey, it's Snellville UMC. This is Blake Schuler, the Director of Youth Ministries uh, at Snellville. Um, it's good to see all of y'all. Well, you see me uh, anyways. And I get the awesome opportunity this Sunday to celebrate three amazing people, two of which are our very own students who are graduating from their high schools. Johnny Latson Hidalgo, who has graduated from Loganville High School, and Miriam Martinez Rivera, who is graduating from Shiloh High School. We are super proud of them and their achievements and what they've done. Uh, Johnny is looking into going into construction after he graduates, which will be super cool. And Miriam is going to Cornell University in the fall. She'll be studying human biology, health, and society with a pre-med track. But they're not our only seniors that go to Snellville. In fact, there's one senior who has grown up all throughout uh, their childhood and into their teenage and even into their adulthood, which is happening right now. Uh, she volunteers at both uh, children's ministry and in the youth ministry. In fact, she's the intern and we're going to celebrate her a little bit. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, you need to know because it's Kelly Duckworth. Say hey to everyone, Kelly. Hello. So Hello. Kelly, where are you graduating from? Uh, I am graduating from Georgia Gwinnett College this year. And with a degree in? Uh, in elementary education. Yes. So, bachelor's degree. Awesome, awesome. Now, tell me this, because this might be something that's unique, is this is something that's never really happened to seniors before. How has it been being in this kind of stay-at-home 
uh, lockdown situation um, and being a senior? It's definitely been weird and I feel like it's been different for, for everyone really. Um, for my senior experience, I uh, kind of missed out on, on student teaching my last few weeks and saying goodbye to my fifth graders at Brookwood Elementary. Um, but on the upside, uh, I get to spend a lot more time with my family and my mom, um, which I didn't really get to do because of student teaching before. So mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, what is after graduation or the summer uh, for you? Well, um, I just got accepted into a position at Mason Elementary to teach third grade there. It's up in Duluth. So yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. So I know you're not the only senior and Johnny and Miriam aren't either. So what can we do to help honor seniors this week? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think if you are a senior or if you know a senior, definitely comment their name below. And we're going to be putting out a post with all of the seniors celebrating them and honoring them for completing such a huge milestone in their life. Mm. Awesome. Well, on behalf of Snellville UMC and the youth ministry, congratulations, seniors. to conclude our series about where our attention is focused. During the past few weeks, we've talked about paying attention to our relationship with God, to serving others, to our purpose, to those whom we love. And today, I want us to think about paying attention to discipline. Now, I'm not thinking about our United Methodist Book of Discipline, I'm thinking about the disciplines of our faith that make all of us stronger, more mature, and help us to grow in our relationship with Jesus. As we begin to think about discipline, we're going to hear some words from the 12th chapter of the letter to the Hebrews. Paul wrote this letter to encourage and to inspire the believers of that time. There are all sorts of reasons that Paul could have written. Some scholars suggest that Paul wrote this letter because um, people were having all kinds of difficulties in the church, including uh, heresies that had arisen. That may or may not be true. What I want us to think about this morning is that Paul wrote this letter, in some measure at least, because people were just getting tired of being Christian, of following the disciplines of our faith. I want to suggest that people had grown tired of trying to live a faithful life. Perhaps some of them wanted to return to their former ways. Perhaps others wanted to be like their neighbors and were tired of trying to keep all of the disciplines of our Christian life and faith. Does any of that describe anyone that you might know? Does it describe any of us in any way or another? Well, as you think about that, I want to invite you to listen to the opening verses of the 12th chapter of the letter to the Hebrews as Fred Williams reads it for us. 
Today's scripture reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate your reading. I don't want any one of us to get lost in the fact that Many of us have heard this text many times, especially on All Saints Sunday. Today, though, let me invite you to think with me about it one more time and see if these words have something to say to us in the here and now. The Christian journey is not a sprint through life. It's more like a marathon. We don't have uh, to do everything that there is to do in Christian life today or next week or even next year. But we do need to give attention to growing and becoming the disciples we have been saved to be. Discipleship is a lifelong process. Let me say that again. Discipleship is a lifelong process. Discipleship is a process that lasts as long as we're able to think and pray and behave. John Wesley used to say, I was saved yesterday, I am saved today, and by God's grace, I will be saved tomorrow. He understood that Christian discipleship does not end at salvation but continues to expand and mature. Paul's letter to the Hebrew Christians was in part to remind them not to grow weary, not to give up, but to push forward, to give attention to growing in grace. It has become very evident to me during this period of limited contact with others that Change is taking place everywhere around us. It continues even when we're required to stay at home. I can see it in our granddaughter, Charlotte. I had been in the habit of being with her and my grandson every week on Thursday. But for the past couple of months, I've only been able to spend time with them virtually. During this time, She's learned to do all kinds of things. She's learned to sit up. She can scoot around on the floor. She's starting to crawl a little bit. She can hold her bottle. And she has begun to feed herself. She's in a process of becoming. This Christian life that we profess is similar in some ways, but we all have to pay attention to this process of becoming. This means we must pay attention to our disciplines. Now, in the next few moments, I want to mention just a few of these. The first is that we need to spend time daily in prayer. Now, by that, I don't mean that we spend time every day telling God what it is we want God to do, and then we go on about our business. I mean that we spend some time each and every day with God being silent listening, listening for what God wants us to hear. Our world is a noisy place, and being silent every now and again is helpful. Let me encourage you every day to find a quiet place. Go there and breathe deeply. Relax. Do nothing but pay attention to what God may need to say to each of us. And then find some kind of time other than Sunday school 
to pay attention to reading, studying, being challenged by the words of Scripture. Now, I'm not asking you to spend long hours or to even read long, long passages. But each of us needs to pay attention to what Scripture has to teach us. That in itself will make our prayer lives richer, our devotional lives more meaningful, and our service to God and others more joyful. We need to pay some attention to our family members. When was the last time you asked some member of your family what they think about something that really matters to them? When was the last time you and your spouse or significant other did something together simply for the sake of doing something together? Each of us needs to remember that God has given us our families as gifts. We need to pay attention to them. Have you been at all blessed by our virtual services of worship during this pandemic? Whether we're sitting together in our church building, sitting in our homes, looking at a screen or a TV or an iPad or iPhone, we need to give some of our attention to worship. It's one of the disciplines that helps us to shape and give definition to our souls. I know some people say, and I've heard them say it, and perhaps you have too, that they can worship God on a golf course or while out fishing or even sitting on a beach or by a pool. I don't doubt that. I think it's difficult, but I don't doubt that it's possible. What I do think I know is that there are other pursuits which are equally poor as substitutes for worshiping God together with fellow disciples. Whether we're in the same room or worshiping together at the same time, it's important for us to worship God as the people of God. And we need to give some of our attention to serving and caring for others. That's something this congregation does extremely well. And I want you to know how grateful I am to you, how impressed I am with how much care and service you offer to others in the name of Jesus Christ. But I have two questions. First, do you have the opportunity to encourage other members of this congregation or the community of faith who have not yet given adequate attention to the discipline of serving and caring for others? One of the best disciplines we can adopt is to encourage other Christians, other believers to grow and to serve. The second question I have is this. As a congregation, do you think we give too much? I think when we pay attention to what it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus, we may find that there are ways we can still reach out and serve and give to others that we haven't even yet thought about. And I hinted at the last thing that I wanted to ask you to give some of your attention toward, and that is the importance of raising up new disciples. Whether it's by example, the one that you set, or whether it's by the training of other disciples to become leaders as they become members and growing members of any congregation, whether it is the development of new followers, gathering them together to serve and to grow, each of us needs to pay attention to our responsibility for making and growing other disciples. You may think you have nothing to share, 
but I think God might have a different idea. We have a great and godly heritage. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, by the souls and memories of those who have made it possible for us to claim the name of Jesus. If we want to continue to draw people into the Christian faith, then we will want to pay attention to Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith. And we will want to pay attention to the disciplines that he has set for us to follow. If we can do that, if we will not lose hope, we will continue to make new and growing disciples, even as we grow and become renewed ourselves. May God help us to do just that. Amen? Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm so glad that you have been a part of our worship and our fellowship. I hope this has been a meaningful time for you, but don't let it end today. There are all sorts of activities and opportunities for you to continue to grow in your faith during the week to come. I hope you'll take a few moments to notice on Facebook, through emails, and on our website, just what is possible for all of us to participate in in the week to come. Until now, may God bless you and keep you and hold you in the palm of his hand until we meet again. Amen. What heights of